Welcome to the Mystical Motherhood Podcast. This is Chelsea, and I want you to create a happy family. I use my background in Western and Eastern medicine, birth, and ancient yogic practices to help the modern mother learn how to live a healthier life and create conscious children. This is your guide to fertility, conception, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and the early childhood years. Are you ready to live the life of your dreams? Hello, welcome everybody to Mystical Motherhood's first podcast, number one. I'm going to start out by explaining my history a little bit and why I'm doing this podcast, and then I'm going to go directly into teaching you about nutrition and why that's important for a healthy and conscious pregnancy, um, especially to prepare for motherhood. My story starts back about 10 years ago. I decided to go to nursing school and I went into labor and delivery. And I was working at a hospital that birthed four, or maybe was around four births a day. And I saw the medical side of birth and I experienced how intense that can be and how and how much we're missing on that side of it. I went to study with Ina Mae Gaskin at the farm in Tennessee. She's the most famous midwife in the world. And at the farm, I learned that birth can be a natural and loving and spiritual experience. And it changed my entire life and the projection of what I would end up doing. I went on to become a family nurse practitioner so that I could study the prenatal side of birth and really understand what happens to women before they go in the clinic. And then I actually experienced two of my own home births while going through a spiritual process, an internal spiritual process that really opened me up to a higher source. And from all of this, my experiences in Western um, and also studying Eastern medicine, I created Mystical Motherhood, the book. And it's a guidebook to help women through conscious conception, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and into the early childhood years. I combined my background in yogic science, kundalini yogic science, and different healing modalities to create a resource for experienced mothers and also new mothers to to ultimately create a conscious child, because there's not really any guides out there on how to do that. So my hope for this podcast is that I can give you the resources that you need in order to connect to yourself in order to create a happier family. And my theory around that is that I start from the most basic needs and I move people up to the higher needs. So basic needs would be food, shelter, sex, um, and then safety would be the next as you move up the hierarchy and then into love and esteem or <clears throat> love and belonging, self-esteem, and then fulfilling your, your highest needs. So today I'm going to start talking about food. And nutrition, and why it's so, so, so important for pregnancy and preparing for motherhood. And it's something that we actually completely miss in the clinic. And it's, I didn't, I mean, as much as we study it in school, which is actually not as much as you'd think we would, um, it's, it's just skipped over in the clinicals, in clinics with when you're with patients because there's not that much time. And so sometimes midwives will ask you for your diet, but it's what you really need to do is prepare before you have a baby or in between babies to make sure that you're keeping up with the amount of nutrition needed to produce new life. I'm going to start with why we need to let go of heavy metals and toxins before we become pregnant. And I want to give you a resource. I want you to head over to Anthony Williams' site. And he wrote Medical Medium and many other wonderful books. And he provides a protocol for getting rid of heavy metals through supplements. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that. And you want to get rid of heavy metals six months before minimum, before you actually conceive your child. This is important because each generation, the heavy metals um, such as lead or mercury accumulate in your body and you actually transfer it on to the next generation. So though you may not have had any problems, your child may have issues with lead toxicity or um, 
heavy metals later in his or her life. And so you want to get that out of your system because it adds up over all of these generations. You also want to clean out, you know, you don't want to as as hard as it is, you want to you want to clean out everything you put on your body and everything that you allow in your environment, which would be what kind of chemicals are around you? What kind of um um, products are you using? Are they natural? These are kind of things that you need to just look at on a bigger picture. And if it's hard, choose to cut out things slowly. Do what you need to do to just sort of clean out everything around you so that you feel like you're creating a really um, conscious vessel that can hold a baby. You also want to clean your body of with certain foods and uh, through nutrition. So you want to clean out certain items, but you also want to add in specific foods that are really, really healthy um, for your diet. And a prenatal vitamin just does not cut it. I think in Western medicine, we feel like that if we give a prenatal or we're taking a prenatal, that it's going to solve all the issues of the nutrition, um, the, what's needed to create a baby, and it, and it doesn't. So what happens when you are pregnant is you're giving all of your, obviously, all of your nutrients nutrients to this child. And then say you have another baby and you don't wait a period of time, you will end up, the baby will end up taking like, like a parasite all of the nutrients from your body. And there are studies that show that if you aren't full of you know, calcium or you don't have enough fat, the baby will actually take fat from your brain or take calcium from your bones. Or um, t- it's, it, it, it just lives off of you. And so not only will the baby not have enough, but you won't have enough and you both almost get sucked up and dried out. So fortifying ourselves before we have children and in between births is incredibly vital. And some resources say to space children up to three to four years, just so you can get the amount of nutrients and vitamins and minerals that's required to actually produce a child at the level that it needs to come out. And, um, it's interesting with my children, I had them 18 months apart. I didn't, the the second one came quickly and, I can see a difference in their health. I can see my first child doesn't very she doesn't get sick very often. She ha, she doesn't have a runny nose, she doesn't have any eczema, she doesn't have any issues, but my second child who I ate the same with, I you know, there was no difference if anything, it was even better, but I had them very close and she's sick more. And there's and there's and doctors will see this with every generation that it's likely that the every as your children go down the line, they're not going to get the same genetic composition or the same kind of you know power in their genes or makeup as the first child because you gave it all to them. And so the the nutrients affect the bone structure, the sy- symmetry of the face, and having eating the right foods can actually switch. The DNA. This is called epigenetics. So, in epigenetics, um, behavioral epigenetics specifically, the belief is, and it's it's a new science that's growing within the last five to ten years. It's saying that your genes actually don't predict your destiny. They won't. You can actually switch your genes on or off. So, just because something in your family was, let's say, your dad had. Um, there's a a history of high blood pressure or cholesterol. We used to think that you would be inheriting that and there was nothing you, I mean, there was no hope for you. So you basically succumb to, you, you know, what your family had. But now they know that through your diet, through your thoughts, through your emotions and through your environment, you can actually alter your genes. And diet is so important for this because eating the right foods actually gets to the cells and can turn off or turn on specific cells that to make you function at a higher level. So your gene or your genetic pool doesn't mean that you can't heal from what you were given. Um, and there's more, I'm going to write more on that and I'll have more podcasts about that. That's a whole entire different subject and I will give you lots of resources for that in the future. But right now I want to go back into um, health. And I talk about a little bit more about food before I jump into what you should and what you should not eat. You need to understand 
how deficit our our culture is with vitamins and nutrients. First off, 74% of American women are lacking the proper nutrients in their diet because we're living off of vegetables grown in poor soil. We resource our foods from animals that are sick. We don't take the proper minerals and nutrients, and we're eating a carbohydrate-rich diet that is just doesn't contain the nutrients that we, our ancestors once grew up with. And so eventually one of these generations is the, we don't even know when it's going to happen, but we're going to start to get sicker and sicker because we just don't have the type of nutrients needed to, to live a healthy and prosperous life. We also have to begin to think of food as a language. So food is like a code to your body and it carries a vibration. So when you're eating food that doesn't have high nutrition, or you're eating a bland diet with doesn't have a lot of energy or taste, it it, that's a vibration. If I choose to eat an animal that died in fear, or was hurt before it died, I'm actually picking up the cortisol or the fear hormones of that of that animal, and I'm taking it into my body. So I'm choosing to have that type of language or that type of vibration in my personal cells. If I'm eating the vibration of fruits and vegetables, I'm going to get you know that higher frequency feeling inside. I'm going to feel better because I'm eating that type of food. And Anthony Williams, which I completely agree with, says one of the most important foods you can eat if you're trying to get pregnant is fruit. Because when you want to bear fruit, eat fruit. It makes a lot of sense. I don't believe in the sugar fear around fruit. I think it's a very, very healthy and natural thing for us to eat and our ancestors ate it. Um, And we'll go into more of that later. But you need to start to look at your food. It's like, where did this come from? What is this going to make me feel like? And also, what are my emotions when I'm eating food? Do you, when you're, you have to catch yourself of what part of your brain you're functioning off of when you're actually eating your food? Are you, are you functioning from your limbic brain, which is your fight or flight and res, you know responsive brain, which is the animalistic Uh, instincts in you that just is neurotic and reacts? Or are you functioning from your prefrontal cortex, which is your conscious brain where you would be creative and want to live in a high vibration and you want to feel good and create new fun projects for this earth? So when you're functioning and you're feeling, you know, functioning from your limbic system, you're likely, which is your fear response system, you're likely going to pick foods with a low vibration when you're going to go to your comfort food. So that's going to be a chocolate cake. It's going to be, you know, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a piece of toast or what do you think? Chips, anything. I mean, the comfort foods is what it just doesn't have the same vibration, right? But if you're if you know that you're living consciously and you're you're paying attention to what you eat, you're going to be functioning and you're going to create a neural a new neural brain map to train your mind to work from the prefrontal cortex. This is all in my book Mystical Motherhood. It's much more in depth than that, but what I want you to understand is that you have to begin to feel the emotions that are connected to the food and start to tune into if are you Are you blanking out when you're eating? Are you, you know, getting really, really stressed out and you immediately go to the cupboard and you pull out crackers and cheese? Because that's what I do. If when I'm not in my conscious mind, I'll immediately go and I'll snack and I'll and I'm I just lose sense of time and and, where I am. And I really don't know you don't know how much you're eating, you don't know what you're eating, and it's likely a low vibrational food. But if we can catch ourselves in the emotion in the emotion and see how much emotions are related to the food we're eating, we can begin to eat more consciously. So it's begin, you catch the emotion first, and then you see the reaction and where that's involved with food. Because food is often used as a way to control your environment and make you feel safe and comforted when, when you're feeling stressed out inside. We all know that, hopefully. Another thing I want you to understand, so I'm, going, I'm just going through a long list of important concepts around food, you need to know where your food is sourced from. So you want to trace it back 
And I know there's a lot of hype around eating organic food, and not everyone can afford that, but if you can, it's really, really important thing to consider because organic, hopefully USDA organic, is going to be sourced differently than a farm, a mass produced farm that uses chemicals or antibiotics on its animals. You need to understand where, like, so let's take a piece of steak. Where, if you have it, a piece of steak packaged, did was the how was the cow um, that you're about to eat was the cow treated nicely? Was the cow um, filled with antibiotics or was it filled with fear before it died? Was it filled with hormones to keep it strong? What is the energy of the cow? What is the original source of that cow? If you look at food in the ground, was did it come from nutrient-dense soil? Where did it grow from? So you want to go back in time and because that's the type of nutrients that you're going to put in your body is the original source of it. And one and a big problem if you're trying to get pregnant and you're not getting pregnant for any identifiable identifiable reason, cut out meat. Um, cut out meat that is especially at least go organic first and then cut out meat completely because when the when the animals are killed you're picking up the cortisol level of the fear response and you're bringing that cortisol into your body and one of the one main reason of infertility not a main reason but a, a possible cause can be high cortisol levels within your own body so why add other sources that are in complete fear when they are passing away and eating that. So you want to really think about where the food is coming from and the vibration if it um, brings to you. Uh, A lot of people have a problem. I'm going to go through things you should and should not eat, but a lot of people have a problem like, how can I do that? How can I begin to make massive changes like that? How can I give up everything? Or um, I, I just, it just, it feels overwhelming. So you don't do anything and people just freeze when it comes to letting go of certain things in their diet. You don't have to give it all up. I'm all about what works for you and choosing things, you know, making small changes that create a big impact in your life. And l- so let's say you do have an intolerance to gluten or you are allergic to eggs or dairy. Just give that up for a little while. For two weeks minimum and see how giving up that one thing affects you. And if let's say you're addicted to chocolate and you really, really love chocolate, then switch to cocoa nips, just switch something out and make the small changes. Don't say, Oh, the, all of this is impossible. I can't make these changes. I don't know how to do this on a massive scale. Then pick what works for you and work with that. And then slowly add on. And when I teach people how to meditate or like how to create meditation in their life, I would say the same thing. I would say, don't do meditation in, in, you know, big binges. And that's the same for food. Like don't binge diet. Look at the like. Take it daily, daily, um, slowly, and pace yourself. So, if I'm teaching someone to start a meditation, I would teach them a three to eleven minute meditation, and then I would say to do that every single day at the same time. And it's sort of like that with food. So, let's say you're willing to give something up, you can just give that one item up and see how you feel, and just track your emotions and attachment to it, and how you feel when you actually give it up. Um, I want to go also into some specific studies on nutrition and why it's important for women during pregnancy. Uh, researchers have shown that when feeding rats specific, this is, this is a really good example of an epigenetic study of how food can switch our DNA. So two sets of rats were given, um, one rat wasn't they were came from the same genetic background, and one rat was given um, specific vitamins. I, I don't have the list with me right now, what, but they were containing methyl types of vitamins like choline and vitamin B twelve, I believe, and a couple a couple more. And that just by giving that specific vitamin during pregnancy, the the children of or the baby rodents of that rat did not inherit the same gen didn't didn't expose the same genetic code of the other of the other rat. So the other rat had diabetes and was obese and the the rat that was given the vitamins was not. It's this very simple study, but it shows that food can actually alter your DNA and create a better future for your child. So that's how important it is. And they also are showing no matter so the the environment 
in the womb is so important for the baby that if you eat the wrong food or you don't eat enough food, you're programming the child for obesity in the future. Because on either way, on either, if you're eating, let's say you're eating vegetable oil, <clears throat> you're going to, while you're pregnant, let's say you're eating lots of fast food and you, you eat a lot and you gain a lot of weight and, it, and you think you're being healthy, but it's actually not enough nutrition for your child because you're not eating nutrient dense, dense foods. You're eating fast foods that's full of sugar and full of, um, vegetable oils and canola oils, which are very toxic for you while pregnant. So that child will likely um, have, could likely inherit diabetes in the future. But on the other side of that, a child that is in the womb and doesn't, the mother really, really watches what she eats almost too much and she's malnutritioned and she doesn't have them at the same amount of nutrients, that diet or that child's also going to be programmed for obesity and with the possible, you know, um, complications of diabetes, you know, all the complications around a di- or around obesity later in life because it still didn't get enough nutrition. And so both children are being programmed in the womb for that they're not going to have enough, that when they come out, there's going to be scarcity of nutrition. Because what you have to understand is everything you think, feel, and are around and you eat, create the characteristics and destiny of the child for its lifetime while you're pregnant. And so that's why it's so, so important to get yourself together emotionally, physically, and spiritually before you have a child. I can't even explain to you how much you can create a magical and unique individual. I'm going to go into the things that you should be eating while you're pregnant. This is also food that you want to eliminate or you want to add to your diet before you have a baby. So it's really, really important to have a really clean system before you conceive and eliminate all these bad things. Because if you're having a problem with infertility, you likely could boost up your nutrition or uh, balance your calories out and eat the right nutrients to create a really, really healthy body that's ready to conceive. And there's so much information on this and it's in my book, Mystical Motherhood. And I have some other resources that I will provide throughout. But you need to read about this too. And you can, I, I recommend if you need help cleaning your body to go to Dr. Junger's clean program. He provides a wonderful program and a book on exactly how to clean up. And he, if you need help and assistance doing that, you can order his um, supplies. It works really, really well for me. And I learned a lot from it because I wasn't able to do it alone the first time. Um, otherwise you can do it yourself. And here are some basics. So you want to eat healthy fats and healthy protein. So fats are really, really good for us. We're actually eating a carbohydrate rich diet, which isn't very good for us in our, you know, present time. So good fats would be, um, olive oil, peanut oil, butter, macadamia nut oil, coconut oil, and animal fats in the right, um, amounts, bad fats, do you do not want to eat canola oil, soy soy oil, um, safa, safa, safflower, sorry, cottonseed, grapeseed, or sunflower. These are trans fats. And trans fats are really, really, really toxic for our bodies. It's more toxic than we even know. And hopefully they'll have more studies out this on this soon. But sugar, and especially vegetable oils, they block signals to our bodies that run our metabolism correctly. So they disrupt maternal metabolism. They lead these um, trans fats can lead to gestational diabetes. They can lead to eclampsia um, during pregnancy and they block the transmission to your cells. So they make you feel sick and they also make your, make you have problems in your gut. So if you're having any problems with gastritis or um, food coming up at night or just feeling icky and full, trust me, cut out the vegetable oils. It's one of the most toxic things for your body. Um, but you do want to eat healthy, healthy fats. Like another way uh, you want to read, um, eat omega three rich foods, wild cut salmon, avocados, nuts. You want to eat a lot of vegetables and fruits. So we co-evolved from plants. Uh, we didn't co-evolve from animals actually in the beginning. Um, you want to eat nutrient dense, organic and chemical fruit, uh, free fruits and vegetables. This would be a lot of kale, collards, mustards, uh, mustard greens, 
a plant-based diet will switch you will switch on 500 specific genes that create health and more more than 200 genes that that protect you from cancer. So healthy fats, vegetables, fruits, meat, it depends on if you eat meat or not. Two camps go, you know, both ways. If you eat meat, we'll talk about that in a little bit exactly what type of meat to eat. But if you're not really comfortable and you want to detox, go sparingly on the meat um, and eat. Always go back to free range and grass fed um, animals so that you're getting that healthy um, resource and vibration of the food. Fish, make sure you're eating wild caught fish and you want to watch for mercury toxicity, toxicity, especially if you're cleansing before you have a baby. You want to make sure you're getting the right supplements. So in my book, I have a list of supplements that you can take. You want to make sure you're getting the B vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin B12. Um, you want to make sure you're getting omega-3 fatty acids. If you're not eating fish, you want to get that in a supplementation, but do not take it in the form of fish oil. You can get natural plant-based ones. I have a list of more um, supplements such as magnesium, probiotics, and all the supplements for your brain in my book, Mystical Motherhood. You want to eat beans, lentils, and legumes, but about one cup a day, because if you eat more than that, it's difficult to digest, and you might want to soak those overnight so that your digestion system, it stops the gas from forming um, in your intestines. Back to things you want to eliminate, dairy. So most people are very sensitive to dairy. It's likely that you are too. And it also causes a lot of the problems in the reproductive system. So if you have a problem with dairy, you think, you know, you don't even know if you do, I recommend just getting off of it or stopping dairy because it bogs down the liver and it prevents toxins from leaving your body, um, which can create a heightened allergic state. For example, my child is allergic to dairy and we switched to almond milk when, when I was ready to, and she is so much better now. Um, you can also switch to goat cheese, goat milk, um, and if you're going to have a yogurt, if you choose to have yogurt in your life, make sure it's full of fat and not the low-fat yogurt because low-fat yogurt tends to be full of sugar. You want to get off some grains and high glycemic food. So you want to eat a low glycemic diet that stabilizes your hormone levels. So high glycemic foods, they cause inflammation and inflammatory chemicals, which lead to stress, fluid retention, headaches, insomnia, um, especially before you have a baby, just try what it feels like to stop all products containing gluten, which is wheat, barley, and rye, and any refined carbohydrates such as cookies, chips, or crackers. They, If we look back in history, grains are a modern day discovery, and over time, they have been totally cut of their nutrient density. Um, so if you want to eat grains, switch over to brown rice, um, quinoa, maybe even millet for a little while and see if that makes a difference in the way you feel. Sugar. Sugar is one of the most toxic things for us and it's in absolutely everything. You walk down the aisle of every food store and it's just in everything as is vegetable oil. But it is really, really toxic and it's one of the fastest things that ages you. So both sugar and vegetable oil, it actually hits the cells and it, it breaks down your immune, immune system and it makes you susceptible to all these different problems. And it, I believe that's the problem with, I mean, it is the problem with the rising rate of obesity is we were, we've, we've changed our diet more in the last 50 years than in the last 1,000 years, and our bodies just can't take it. And so the next generation is going to really, really suffer because we don't know the consequences of eating substances that are toxic, such as sugar and vegetable oil or canola oil for a long period of time. And sugar is so, it, 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 it's so powerful that it's actually, it is similar to eating or doing heroin, it actually hits the same kind of brain chemicals as that. And so you have to realize if you have an addiction to it and see all the places that you may be eating it and how you may be crashing after you have it. Some really good resources for you to turn to other than mystical motherhood would be um, Deep Nutrition is a good book. If you eat meat, she recommends she goes into what, how you can affect your DNA through food, and her recommendations are, this isn't for a cleanse, 
per se what I just talked about, but her recommendations would to be eat meat cooked on the bone. So like you, you slow cook the meat on the bone. This is if you, when you're pregnant and you, and you do eat meat and you want to eat really nutrient dense, really healthy food. You can read her book on exactly how to do that. She also recommends organs. <laughs> and this is, she looked back in history and she looked at the way that we ate years ago and why people had stronger bones from specific tribes and why, you know, how their babies were healthy. And she found that they ate meat cooked on the bone, organs or parts of the, the animal. They ate the whole animal and they ate fresh, raw plants and animals. So are they, so if they ate their, you know, carrots, it was raw and, and, and they didn't lose because if you overcook your vegetables, you'll lose the nutrients. And they also ate fermented and sprouted foods. So she teaches how to cook fermented and sprouted foods. And if you don't want to create it yourself, you can actually go and buy it. It's amazing. And they have all these things online. And another thing she recommends is bone broth. Um, and I highly recommend bone broth, especially while you're pregnant, because bone broth is it helps with the cartilage production um, for you and the baby. And these things are so, so important. Um, And if you want to boost your system, you need to eat these sort of things and you need to add good supplements. It's a good idea to take your prenatal supplement and your methylfolate long before you try to get pregnant. It's a good idea to cleanse your system three months before you get pregnant. It's a, it's a, you must take out the heavy metals six months before you get pregnant or conceive because All of these things will affect the child. I appreciate you listening to our first podcast from Mystical Motherhood. And I hope you learned a lot about how to, how important your food is, how important the connection to your food is, and and most importantly, that you can make changes for your life and how this can affect your growing baby. And I'll be back every single week bringing you new information on conscious conception, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and in the early childhood years. If you liked this podcast, please rate us and give us a shout out below. It really, really, really helps so that other women can also get this information. And I'll see you next week.